Uh, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Networking Strategies in Today's Digital World. And let's face it, networking has become more challenging during the pandemic as we're not able to see each other in person. But this webinar aims to give you important tips and strategies so that you will be more confident and effective at virtual networking. Our objectives. We will discuss what is networking and why it's important. Uh, you'll learn how to stand out at virtual events and how to create a strategic networking plan that will get you more interviews. Also, you'll learn how to master a 20 minute informational interview. So what is networking and why is it so important? Networking is the building of professional relationships for the exchange of information and for mutual benefit. And I think the key here is mutual benefit. So often I hear students, they say networking is so awkward. And I feel like it's awkward because students are going after it as just being receivers and they're not giving also. But if you see it as a two way street, right, that you're really building that professional friendship with others. Let's face it, if you had a friend and you were only the giver and never the receiver, you probably wouldn't be friends very long. So try to think of networking as building professional friendships. And research tells us that 85% of jobs are never advertised, which means you'll never find out about those open positions unless you're networking. And we call that the hidden job market. Uh, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics says that 70% of jobs are achieved through networking. So if you are looking for a job or an internship and all you're doing is applying online and not networking, it's gonna take you a lot longer to find a job. Expand your B-School network. There are so many opportunities that you have as a business school student to grow your network and you wanna take advantage of all of them. Network with your professors. They know so many different professionals in industry and also your administrators. We here at GBCR, we have a great network and we're all here and ready to help you. Also, if you've had past jobs, your colleagues and managers, they make terrific references for you for jobs and they could let you know about different positions at their companies and also refer you in. Um, also your past employers, they know your performance the best. And also fellow ZARB students. So take the opportunity to get to know one another. I know many examples of first year students that connected with second year students. And the, some of the second year students landed internships and referred the first year students to those companies and they also landed internships. And also, of course, network with ZARB alumni. Uh, we have uh, tremendous alumni here at Hofstra who are willing to help. Networking opportunities, there are so many. Um, every semester, GBCR gives you the opportunity to network in our various events. Also, join a professional association in your area of interest. And those associations hold conferences and quite often they tag on career fairs. And those are filled with great opportunities. Join a ZARB club and become an officer and also participate in alumni associations either at your undergrad university as well as here at Hofstra. And you'll want to volunteer, get internships and jobs and join LinkedIn groups. Uh, ZARB School of Business has a LinkedIn group. We at GBCR have a LinkedIn group and um, there's also a ZARB alumni group. So join all three. The mindset that you want to have when you're networking is to be positive. And then don't stay in your comfort zone. Uh, also give 
first and receive later. So again, I'm talking about you want to be that giver um, and then have that conversational balance. Be a good listener. You know, ask questions and uh, really show genuine interest. Also be grateful and don't expect too much. So it's so important to say thank you whenever you can. The elevator pitch is so important. Now, um, you'll need to have your ele elevator pitch ready when you go on a networking event, when you attend the Hofstra Career Fair or any other career fairs. And also, that is the first question that you will have in most interviews. Tell me about yourself. So that is your 30 second to two minute professional introduction or commercial about yourself. So there's three key steps. So who you are, so maybe you're aspiring and, and the job title that you're interested in and what your, your MBA or an MS student, what your major is, and then uh, something unique about you. And you know what are those relevant skills and experience that the alumni or the employer is looking for that you have? So you really wanna figure out you know, who's your audience and what do they need to know from you? So you change it up every time. And, and then the third one is, why are you here? And how can you benefit the company? So here's an example. Hi, I'm Lauren Moy, and I'm a digital marketing uh, analyst, and I'll be graduating in May with an MBA in business analytics from Hofstra. Last summer, I had a digital marketing internship with HBO and I use Google Analytics to measure the effectiveness of our social media campaigns. And I help to grow the company's brand and sales by 15%. I'm looking for an opportunity to use my marketing and data skills to help companies grow their brand and sales. So if you, if you need a 30 second pitch, so sometimes um, you, know, you don't wanna say this whole thing, um, and so you can say it really short, but maybe just include steps one and three, right? So then you can just say, you know, I, I'm an MBA in business analytics student from Hofstra graduating in May, and I help companies grow their brand and, and, and um, sales by using my marketing and data analytics skills. So I get asked this question by students, so how can I stand out at a virtual event? Well, there's a number of ways, uh, one of which is, you know, find out who will be attending in advance. This way you can already have looked at their LinkedIn profile and maybe even ask them a specific question about their background. So it's, it's okay that you look at their LinkedIn ahead of time. Um, also, you want to research their company. That is so important, especially when you're going to these networking events and at career fairs. One of the biggest complaints I hear from employers are, the student met me at the career fair and asked me, what does your company do? You should never ask that question at a career fair. You should have already researched them. You should know what they do. You should know what their mission is and what the products or services are. Um, and uh, be ready again with your elevator pitch. Also, you want to dress professionally and you want to look and sound your virtual best. Okay, also another thing you can do um, before you go to a career fair is to research the jobs in advance and be ready to speak about how you're a match. For example, Henry Schein is looking for a data analyst, and you see that they're looking for someone that has strong SQL, SQL skills, and you have them. So you want to definitely mention that in the pitch. Uh, for the Hofstra career fairs, you wanna register on Handshake ahead of time for one-on-one -on -one 10 minute time slots and sign up for group meetings. So it's so important that uh, your web camera is framed in the center. Have you ever been to a virtual event 
and you see only like the top of somebody's head or maybe even just their mouth and their camera is not centered. So you want to make sure yours is centered. It's also so important that you're, you have a strong internet connection and you don't lose connectivity. So if you, um, you may have to speak to your roommate or um, housemates to let them know you have an important event. And um, if, if uh, they could also maybe not use the internet during the next half hour to 45 minutes. You also wanna make sure that the lighting is behind your camera and not in front of your camera. Have you ever seen when the lighting is in front of the camera, you all you see is this big flash of light and you can't even see the person's face. Also power up your laptop or phone and make sure your microphone is working. So last week there was a networking with Pride event with Cintas and one of the, the alumni that was speaking was saying how important it was at a virtual event that students had their cameras on and that they were ready to ask questions and seem really interested so and also dress professionally so he said all the same things that i just mentioned delivery is also important so when you say your elevator pitch you want to express enthusiasm right so it's hi great to meet you instead of Hi, great to meet you, right? You wanna show uh, eye contact. Eye contact is a, a sign of respect in the United States. You also wanna smile because smiling projects confidence and it puts you at ease and also the other person at ease. And I know we can't do a handshake in person, but you want to have uh, use a virtual wave instead. Steve Dalton is the author of a book called The Two-Hour Job Search. And Steve Dalton is the MBA career director at the Duke School of Business. Um, and so this is a way to create a strategic networking plan. So I know you as MBA students, MS students are very busy. And so you really wanna maximize the time that you put into your job search. So he talks about creating a lamp list. So it's brainstorming 40 companies in 40 minutes. So uh, 10 minutes for each method. So we're starting with your dream employers. So research those employers you thought, oh, you know, I came to MBA school and I would really love to work at this company. Yeah, so who are those companies? Um, also alumni employers. That's so important because you will have contacts at every employer. You can so research them on LinkedIn uh, using the alumni page. Also, posting search. So you wanna target employees who are currently hiring. And the fourth method is trend following. So let's say you're interested in investment banking. So you would just so do a Google that says trends in investment banking and read about some of the trends that are going on. And then you'll learn about some companies maybe that you've never thought of before and you want to include them in your search. So after you created your list, you wanna prioritize your list. And so the list of 40 is in that column on the left where it says list. And then you want to add these three columns to your Excel spreadsheet. First is alumni, so are there alumni at this company that I can network with, yes or no? And then motivation, one to five. One being low and five being high. Five being like, I really want to work at this company. Um, and then posting is one to five. So one is there's no job posting. And five, there are a few job postings and they're a great match for me. Okay, so uh, after you fill this out, you want to sort it by motivation, then by posting, and then by alumni. And then you really want to start trying to network with people uh, that are high on your list. 
Okay, if you're an international student, I would add another column that says H-1B and whether or not this company has a history of sponsoring H-1B visas. And you can check by looking at myvisajobs.com. All right, so um, now you have found alumni um, as employers that you want to network with. You've identified who they are, um, and now you uh, want to have a virtual chat or an informational interview with them. What's the purpose? What's the goal, right? You want to build internal advocacy inside a company. You want to get advice and recommendations from them, and you want to build mentor relationships and learn about their industry, their job, and their company. The important thing here too is you do not want to ask for a job. Why? Because they didn't agree to give you a job. They agreed to give you information and most likely they won't have a job and then you know, you will make them feel bad if you ask them for one. Um, so they'll feel like it's a bait and switch. So you don't want to make that mistake. When you go about requesting an informational interview, you want to choose a friend, professor, or alumni who can provide career advice to you. Oh, I, I, I also wanted to mention, and I should have said this in the beginning, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and uh, we will have a time of Q&A at the end. So uh, just wanted to mention that. Okay. Um, all right, so you want to start with a referral, and um, you know we have a mutual connection with Professor So and So. Um, a phone or video conference. Provide background with your elevator pitch and state what you'd like to accomplish, and request an introduction from a connection to someone in your target company or industry. Okay, so. Let's say you just attended a GBCR event and you want to connect with an alumni. Uh, so one of the things is you really want to customize the invitation. People want to know how they know you and why you want to connect. So um, say, hello, I'm a first year MBA student and I'm considering entering the blank field. Uh, I noticed you are a Hofstra alumnus and maybe you would write a thank you. Thank you for speaking at the alumni networking event or, um, or just that you were impressed with their background. Would you be open to a brief call to provide career advice? Thanks for your consideration. So what's great about uh, times like this is that People are, a lot of people are working from home and they really are open to receiving these phone calls during the workday. Maybe when they weren't working from home and they were in the office, they may not have. So that's one of the benefits. And the other benefit with it being virtual is you don't have to go anywhere, right? It's just, uh, it's just very easy to connect. You also want to be ready with the big three. So when you go on these informational interviews, employers will most likely ask you these questions. They'll say, tell me about yourself. Why are you interested in our company? And why are you interested in this industry? So you want to have the answers ready for these three. And also when you go to a career fair, you should be able to answer these questions as well. Another great book is a book called The 20 Minute Networking Meeting. So how do I make the most of the 20 minutes I have with this employer or alumni? Well, step one is you want to make that great first impression. All right, so, so you want to say thank you for your time. Always start with a thank you. And we have a mutual connection with so-and-so. And, -so, and uh, I... You talk, tell them about your agenda. You know, I, I researched your company and your LinkedIn, and I have a few questions I'd like to ask you and get your career advice. It would probably take about 20 minutes. Is that all right with you? And then step two is the great overview, which is your elevator pitch. Step three is the great discussion. 
And this is where you want to have done some research about them um, and ask some thought provoking questions. And then lastly, you want to ask them for a referral. You know, I'm interested in um, in entering uh, the uh, financial, being a financial analyst in healthcare. Is there anyone that I can talk to? Or how can I help you with anything? And also um, the great ending. So this is, you know, maybe you want to help and say, I thought you might be interested in meeting Professor so-and-so. Maybe they don't know this person. Um, and then, you know, they would be grateful in meeting that person. And then they might offer to connect you to someone as well. So um, a great ending. Thank you for your advice that um, I should get advanced Excel skills or, or I should become, um, take the CFA level one exam or whatever it is that they recommended that you do um, to thank them for their advice and um, also for the connection. And then also what would you do? And then you wanna follow up with them with a thank you uh, thank you email within 24 to 48 hours, just like you would in a job interview. Here are some sample questions you could ask in an informational interview. So what skills or education are needed? Um, what kind of experience would be most helpful? Typical career paths? What do you like most or least? I love question number five. What are the greatest challenges or opportunities in your job? So if you get the answer to that question, take some notes because if you get a job interview, you can try to tailor your answers as to being someone that can add value to that company because you know what some of the challenges that they are facing. And what advice would you give someone pursuing a career in this industry? Um, okay, and then the seven one is asking for a, a referral. In Steve Dalton's book, he also mentions the Tierra approach. So these questions, Tierra starts, uh, um, Tierra is T for trends, I for insight, A for advice, R for resources, and A for assignments. You can look at these questions and use this as part of the great discussion part in the 20 minute networking meeting. So you can, you can ask these questions. Um, so what trends are impacting your business? Uh, what's, what's the most valuable experience at your current employer? What can I do now to prepare myself for a career in this field? Uh, what resources do you recommend? And what project have you worked on recently that added the most value? What's great about this is you start big picture with the trends and the, uh, the insight, and then you start turning the person who's a stranger into a mentor by asking them about advice and resources and assignments. So it's, it's a, a great method. And you can also use some of these questions when you attend virtual events with employers during the Q&A. These make great questions to ask. So you finished the informational interview and you want to send a thank you email, as I mentioned, and if all goes well, you want to stay in touch every quarter. So I get asked by students, what do I say? You don't want to say, do you have a job? That's not what you want to say. So every quarter you can follow up and say, thanks for your advice. You suggested I do X, Y, Z, and I wanted to let you know that I did X, Y, Z. And, you know, give an update about yourself. And then also you could attach an article maybe that you read in Fortune or the Wall Street Journal about a topic that you had discussed. So any, any way that you can add value to this person, you want to show that. And you can ask them for more career advice. You know, now that I've done this, this, and this, what do you suggest I do next? So keep, uh, if you set up another informational interview with the new referral, please keep the first person, the advocate updated about the meeting and thank them again. A lot of people don't do that. And, uh, and it, it shows respect and will pay off well in the end. I wanna share, 
these two success stories of recent students that landed jobs in the last six months. Um, the first one is Ilunga Kalanda. She graduated with her MS in finance and is currently a business analyst too at Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield. She attended a GBCR networking event and she set up an informational interview with the alumnus she met there. And then several months later, that alumnus had an open position and she applied and the alumnus remembered her and she got an interview and then she landed the job soon after graduation. Another example is Jack Manning. He was a he is an MBA in management with a concentration in HR and he's currently a staffing specialist at Northwell Health. He also attended a GBCR networking event and had an informational interview with the alumnus. Um, he did get a summer internship last summer, but because of the pandemic, uh, the offer was rescinded, but he didn't let that stop him. He kept in touch and um, he continued to apply for jobs at Northwell and he got an offer before graduation. So I have dozens and dozens of stories of students that were successful um, because they attended GBCR events and networked and followed up. So when you do that and you apply for jobs, you're not just one resume in a thousand. You're someone that this company, this alumni, this employer has already spoken to and met and liked. And so your chances of getting an interview are so much greater. So my, uh, our next steps is to participate in as many GBCR networking and employer events as you can. Take notes during a virtual event and connect with the employer or alumnus afterwards via LinkedIn and make it a personal goal to have one to three informational interviews every week. Uh, nurture your best networking prospects with updates every quarter and enjoy, uh, relax and have fun meeting new contacts. So I just suggest again to stay positive and don't give up. Um, here are some up uh, networking and job fairs, uh, networking events and job fairs that we have coming up this semester. So I encourage you to um, attend as many as you can. And now we'd like to stop for a time of question and answer.